Okay, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Redeem the lives international. opportunity to be used by you and I pray Father God none of me and all of you Lord I pray that you would just speak your word directly to the hearts of all who are listening all over the world and I pray that your word makes the difference yes. and I thank you Lord God I die to myself and help us all to die to ourselves that we may be on your side in Jesus name we pray amen amen, amen. amen. whose side are you on I want you to turn today, if you have your Bibles, to Exodus chapter 32. And we're going to read a couple of verses in there. What I would like for you to do, guys, is take that scripture home. That whole chapter is what needs to be read, but of course I don't have time for that. But what I would like to do is to go ahead and read a few verses for you. In Exodus 32, I'm going to start at verse uh, 4. And this is when God called Abraham, this is what God called Moses to come to the mountain. He called him to the mountain, Mount Sinai. And it says he received, and this is the commandments, he received the, him at, them at their hand and he, I'm sorry, and fashioned it with the, oh, this is when Aaron was forming a golden calf while Moses was on the mountain. And he received them at their hand, all their gold and jewelry and everything that they had. And he fashioned it with a graving tool after that he had made it and molten calf and they said these be thy gods O Israel which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt skipping down to verse 6 and they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings and the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play and the Lord said unto Moses, Go, <laughs> get thee down for, listen to this, thy people. Talking to Moses now, now it's, suddenly it's his people. Thy people, which thou brought. Now see, he's telling Moses, it's your people that you brought <clears throat> wow, wow, wow. Out, of, out of the land of Egypt. For they have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf and have worshipped it and have sacrificed thereunto and said, These be this, these be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Amen. Now, this is the thing that we don't even realize sometimes that we do. When we say we love the Lord, but yet we put other things before him. Yeah. And it's not on purpose. We're not saying, okay, God, you know what? I'm going to put you aside. No, we don't do that. We don't say, God, I'm just going to put you aside for a minute while I tend to, you know, the things that I want. But no, we don't do that. So now, let's talk about what Moses did. Moses said, and it came to, I'm, looking, I'm sorry, I'm looking at verse 19 now. And it came to pass, as soon as Moses came nigh unto the camp, that he saw the calf and the dancing. Yes. And Moses' anger waxed hot, and he cast the tables out of his hands and break them beneath the mount. So today I'd like to share with you the reason why a lot of us don't see answers to our prayers. I'd like to share with you what happens when we, like the children of Israel, we turn aside. Come on now. Yes. After God delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt with his mighty hand, yes. God gave Moses, God sent Moses 
to Mount Sinai, and Moses went to the mountain to meet with him and gave him ten commandments on two tables of stone. But then God told Moses, go, go down now, because your people <laughs> that you brought yeah. out of Egypt have corrupted themselves. God told Moses that they made a, a molten calf and worshipped the golden calf as the God that delivered them from Egypt. Wow. First of all, how do you do that? How do you, how do you see where God put all of these uh, uh, all of these things on the people of Egypt? Finally, most Pharaoh says, "Get out and get out now!" Because they killed the, the firstborn. Yeah. God does all of this, opens the Red Sea. Yeah. They don't walk on wet ground. It wow. is completely dry. Now, come on. How do you walk on that, cross the other side? Mm -hmm. You literally see them coming after you, and God closes it up on them, yes. and they yes. all die, including Pharaoh. Yes. And you start to rejoice because you know who did it. You know it wasn't wow. anybody wow. but God. Because wow. when Moses woke raised up his rod and said, Stand ye still and see the salvation of the Lord. You right. knew it was God. They turned around and they saw all of them, all the horsemen and the chariots, and Pharaoh drowned too. That's the one thing that they didn't get right in Ten Commandments. Pharaoh also drowned. How do you see that? And then you turn right around and say, This molten calf that we have made. Wow, wow, wow. This is the one that delivered us out of the land of Egypt. 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 Truth of the matter is, <clears throat> let's bring it home. <laughs> we do the same thing. Yeah. Wow, wow. We talk about all that God has brought us through. Yeah. Oh, you just don't know. I'm telling you, you just don't know all that God has done for me. Wow, but wow. yet, when it comes down to giving God the worship that he deserves, We'll turn right back on God. Wow, wow. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm sorry. Let, let me slow down. Okay. So when Moses returned from the mountain after receiving the Ten Commandments from God, the children of Israel, they were naked. They were partying. They were dancing. They were playing. When Moses saw the golden calf and saw them dancing naked, his anger waxed so hot that he cast down the two tables of stone that God had given him with his commandments on them. Wow, wow. Then Moses asked the deal-breaking question. Moses asked a question that we must all ask ourselves today. The most significant question of all. Who? Let's look at verse 20. 25. And when Moses saw the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked unto their shame amongst their enemies, then Moses stood on in the gate of the camp and said this, Who is on the Lord's side? Who is on the Lord's side? And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. Who is on the Lord's side? Let them come to me. And the only ones who came to Moses were the children of Levi. The very ones that God foreknew would be the ones who would come on his side. And he chose them to minister to him in his temple as the priests between the people and God. Amen. Because they chose to be on the Lord's side Amen. when everyone else did not. Jesus. Whose side are you on? Whose side are you on? Help us. My God, help us. Jesus is right. Hallelujah. God told those Levites that came to Moses to kill men, women, and children with their swords. And they killed about 3,000 men died that day. And God said that he would visit the sin of them that remained on them. They will suffer the consequences 
for their iniquity of idol worship. Joshua says in 20, Joshua 24, 15, choose ye this day yes, yes. who you will serve. All right. But as for me and my house, yes. we will serve the Lord. You see, this is where we find ourselves today. We find ourselves at a crossroad in this world. We're so busy being about our stuff. Yeah. Oh, I have this to do, and oh, I have that to do, and oh, I want to get this done, and oh, I want to get that done. And we have our projects, and we work, and we work, and we work, and we play, and we work, and we do all that we desire in our hearts to do. Wow. But do we ever pause and ask God, Lord, what would you God. have me to do today? Wow, wow, wow. We're so busy. We got so much to accomplish. We have goals, and it's good to have goals. And we have projects, and it's good to have projects. But we do so many good things. Mm -hmm. Jesus. But are they God? things. See, there's a difference. We can go about doing good. Oh, there's so many people all over the world who, 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 who feed the poor, who clothe the naked, who, who, who take care of the sick. Yes. They don't look to God. That's just because of their good heart. I mean, you know, they're doing what they know that needs to be done. Wow, wow. It's a good thing. Does it make it a God wow. thing? Wow, wow, that's good. See, the, the difference between a good thing and a God thing Teachers. is good when you know that it's something that needs to be done, and so you go and do it. You take care of the person. You take care of, of what needs to be done. But it's a God thing when God called you to something. He told you who to bless that day. He told you how much to give. He told you what he wanted to do, who he wanted you to lay hands on. Yeah. See, a lot of us are laying hands. We wonder why our prayers aren't answered. We're laying hands or we're we declaring the word. It's not that we don't know the word, Pastor. We quote the word. Wow. We declare the word. We do all of that. It's just that we don't listen to what God said. Because we're laying hands on this person when God didn't say to. All right now. Jesus. It's the one that you lay hands on that God specifically told you to. That's the one that you have great expectations about. Wow, 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 wow. Amen. Wow. I know, I know. That's good. He, gave, he gave it to me first, so I'm, <laughs> I'm just like, whoa, God, help me, Jesus. Wow, wow. Thank you, Lord. Choose ye this day whom ye will serve. So, you see, we're, we're busy, and, and the thing about it is we, we don't understand why, when we're about our own agendas, when it comes to God, we struggle because we don't get God. See, a lot of us say we know, oh, I know God. Oh, yes, I'm intimately acquainted with my maker. I, right, I, I know Come on, that, that he's a Come good on. God. And I, and I know that he, he, he finds time for me every now and then. And I know that he comes in and he stays for a while yeah. every now and then. Oh, I know God. Oh, I know God. We're so busy on our own agendas, but we don't understand God because we don't, we don't know what to do when we don't see our desires coming to pass the, the way we want it to come, the time we want it to come. We, we don't know what to do with that, but we know God. We struggle with the fact that we're having to wait so long on this God that we know now. We know him, right? But we struggle because he doesn't do things our time, our way, or do the things that we ask. Come on. All right now. Well, now, wait, not Pastor now. now. You know the Bible says, ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock. And the door will be open. You are so right. That is exactly what the word says. But just remember, the door that you knock on better be the one that God had for you to knock on. How are you going to know what door to knock on if you don't hear Zika? See, we're so busy all about what we want, what we think. I found it in the word, Pastor. 
It's right here. It's here. Wow, wow. It's right here. Yes, that is the Logos word, but what's your rainbow word for today? Have you heard right. from God? Wow. Now, Pastor, now wait, 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 Pastor. Now, I spent an hour in prayer today, so don't come to me now. I don't pray, I don't talk to God, I don't come on. pour out my Bring heart to Him. I come let on, Him know what Bring I want. On. I let Him know what I need. I let Him know. I let Him know. I let Him know. Ah, I'm so glad you spent time with God, but I just have one question. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Come on now. In the time that you spent with God, you said it was for an hour. Mm -hmm. How much time did you sit quietly and listen to what God had to say to you? See, you don't have to pour out everything to God because God already knows. All right. Come on now. Jesus. He already knows. Yes, now don't get me wrong. He wants you to approach him. He wants you to come to him. He takes pleasure in you wanting to spend time with him. So yes, please pour out your heart to God. Yes, please let him know your desires. Yes, please talk to him. That's what he made us for, was for communication yes. and relationship. Yes. Yes. That's what it really is all about. It's all about our intimate one-on-one -on -one yes. relationship with the one who made yes. us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But, just, but, but, but you know, it's a, it's a sad relationship mm -hmm. when one person does all the talking. All right, yes, it is. Take it away. Only one person gets a chance That's good. to Jesus. pour out their heart. That is good. Wow. And as soon as you finish talking, wow. then you on your way. Wow. Oh, I done poured out my heart to God. Oh, I just feel so much better. Everything. Wow. Phew, everything that was on my heart, I let him know it. Jesus. And I can go about my day. Yes. And I'm accomplish my goal. I'm gonna accomplish what I'm I want to do it. I'm going to lay hands on who I want to lay hands on. And I'm going to have everything done that yeah. I want to Help be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. <laughs> oh, yeah, we put it on there because it says, pray in Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. Whatsoever you shall ask, huh? In my name. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. So we got to put it on there, T. Yeah. We got to yeah. say, oh, what I want in Jesus' name, yeah. amen. amen. Wow, wow, wow. But you know him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Kind of hard to know somebody when you don't give them a chance to talk. Wow. That is good. That is good. Yeah. Wow, wow. We're so busy struggling with what our manipulating God to get what we want. Jesus. In word. Jesus' name. Yeah. Let's ask the right question. Am I on God's side? Or am I on my side? <laughs> am I on God's side or am I on my side? Let's just be real. Come on now. Let's just, you know. So while we're standing boldly in faith, believing God to hear and answer and heal and deliver and set free, yes, we are declaring, we are decreeing his word. Yes, we are standing on what thus saith the Lord, but yet we are missing one very extraordinary piece of God. I got news for you. The God that you know, he's not even interested in what your desires are. He's not even interested in what your conveniences are. Wow, wow. He is not about the business of carrying out your will. Wow, wow, wow. This is the God that you know, right? Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is not even interested in that. Jesus. But, but, but you say he loves you. Oh, he loves you beyond what you can ever begin wow. to fathom. He wow. loves you so deeply. But because... He loves you. Yeah. He's not concerned about what your little infinitesimal mind can come up with. Wow. See, we serve a great God. We serve a God who knows all things. We serve a God who does all the things that he knows is best for us. Yeah. See, we serve a God yeah. who he has all power. He knows all things. He's everywhere present. Mm -hmm. If I fly yeah. with the wind. Tell him, this 
is what I want. And this is what I'm expecting you to do. Because you said in your word that I can ask and I can knock and I can expect because I ask in Jesus' name. Yes. Come on now. Jesus. Whose side are you on? See, well, let me tell you, I told you what he's not interested in. Y'all got that? Yeah. All right. Not your desires. Because see, your little infinitesimal mind can't even begin to know. Infinite testimony. That means infinitely small. Compared to the oh shoot. I said that. Yeah. Glory! Yeah. I, oh, yeah. If you only knew God. Yeah. If I only knew God. Thank you, Lord. What I do know about God is this. Mm -hmm. Your comfort and your pleasure is the very least of his concern. Why? Because he is about doing whatever it takes to build your character. He is about doing whatever it takes to prepare you for what he knows that he's put inside of you. He is about doing whatever he knows is going to put you in proper position. Yeah, yeah. To receive the Ooh. blessings that he has for you. See, the things you're asking for right now, you're not ready for them yet. Because if you were ready, you'd have them. Yeah. He knows that you're not ready to prepare. You're yeah. not ready to receive. You're not ready because if he gave you what you were asking for right now, do you know what you would do? Jesus. That molten calf they made. Jesus. Mercy. Mercy. Mm. My, 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 we forget about the God that gave it to us and we worshiping that instead. Not on purpose, y'all. Y'all need to. I'm wow. not going to tell God to sit down somewhere. I got it now. I'm not going to tell him that. Wow. It's just in our hearts. Yes. See, he knows the very intent yes, he does. Yes. of our hearts. And so he has to do whatever it takes to get us in position to receive what he has for us. And don't you want that? Yeah. You don't want to be in a place. I told God, God, if it's going to mess me up with my relationship with you, then I don't want it. As bad as I want it, I don't want to mess up my relationship with you. If you know that I won't be able to come back to you and tell you thank you and worship you for it, that's how I come out there. I believe that's the reason why I was 37 years old and he gave me my husband. Amen. Oh, but I wanted to be ready. That's my Boaz, and Boaz and T, when he gave him to me, he gave me all that he wanted. My yes. Lord, all that I ever wanted. Yes. I couldn't see it. I couldn't tell it. I didn't know it. I'll tell everybody, my husband and I, we didn't choose one another. We didn't see each other and just, oh, oh I just fell in love with him at first sight. Not at all. All right. We both waited on God Amen. to give us who he had for us, and it turns out, and it was somebody I never would have chosen. And he never would have chosen me. I wasn't his type. Wow, wow, wow. But when you look back at what God has done. Yeah. 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 Let me tell you something. Even Jesus Christ. Your Lord and Savior. When he came to this earth, this was his words. He said, I only do what my father tells me to do. I only speak the words that my father tells me to speak. I only do the works. Because see, the works that you see, my, he says, my father does the works. The words that I speak unto you, they're the words that my father. Well, this is the thing I don't understand. If Jesus only speaks the word that his father told him to speak, if Jesus only does the works that his father, you see, told him to do. Because, you know, there were millions of people that Followed him, but Jesus didn't lay hands on every one of them. Amen. He heard from God. When he went to the woman of Samaria, he, he, he left everybody else and went by himself. That's it. Why would he do that? Because his father. Teach it. Oh, wow, 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 wow. But yet, wow. we 
and all of our little infinitesimal wisdom and knowledge and understanding have the nerve to think, I'm just doing it on my own. I just ask God to bless whatever I do. Just follow me, Lord, and just bless whatever I do. That's what it boils down to. I know you don't say that. No, you don't say that. No, you don't. Wow, 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 wow. The question is always, whose side are you on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, because Jesus went to his father in prayer. He spent a lot of time asking his father, Lord, what do we do the next day? Who would you have me to bless? What would you have me to say? Who would you have me to raise up? I believe if Jesus had his own way, I believe he'd have been to Lazarus before he died. Yes. That's what I believe. Because he loved Lazarus and Mary and Martha because he spent a lot of time with them. Wow, but wow. the Holy Spirit told him, no, no, no. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'll tell you when to go. Right. Jesus. I'll tell you when. Jesus. So when they came to him and said, but Jesus, if you had been here, mm -hmm. my brother wouldn't have died. But Jesus, don't worry. Wow, 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 wow. Do you know who you're talking to? Hey. <laughs> I am the resurrection. Hey. <laughs> I am the resurrection. Hey. <laughs> but I believe if he had done it on his own, he'd have been there before he died. But the Holy Ghost said, no, 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 let's Ooh. give God glory. Yes. Let's yes. show the people what God yes. can do. Yes. Four days later, he showed up. Mm -hmm. Now you want to, I can just see, now you want to show up. Wow. Wow. He stinks wow. now. He's been in the grave for a day. What you going to do now? Yeah. Roll the stone away. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. He even cried with them. But he didn't cry because he didn't think that he was going to raise them up. He cried because if only they knew. No. Yes. Wow. Jesus waited on God's timing. Yes, he did. Why do we think that we don't have to? Mercy. It just depends on whose side you're on. Oh. Now, it, you, do you know who else does it? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit doesn't come with his own words. Do you know that? The Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit waits to hear what the Father would have him to say to you. So when you pray to the Holy Spirit to guide you throughout the day, the Holy Spirit knows what you are to do because he hears from the Father. Jesus, the Holy Spirit, don't do their own thing. Hmm. Wow, wow, wow. And they live inside of us. Mm -hmm. Wow, 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 wow. Wonder why our prayers aren't answered, huh? Jesus. See, if Jesus didn't know where he wanted to go, the Holy Spirit doesn't speak where he wants to speak. And he left us his example. Matter of fact, he even said, if you want to be my disciple, take up your cross. Deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. The first step was to what? Deny yourself. What does that mean, deny yourself? Forget about who you are? No. It just simply means forget about your desires. Forget about your plans. Forget about your goals. See, the, the truth of the matter is when you say, Jesus, I accept you into my heart as my personal Lord and Savior, you gave up all of your rights and all of your privileges and all of your plans and all of your, uh-huh, all of you. Now you belong to him. So from this point, he's molding you. He's shaping you. He's making you. He's breaking you. He's forming you into the anointed vessel that he has for you to be. And how does he do that? Well, you know how they make gold? You know how they, because when they find gold in those mines, it's black, it's like black coal. Oh, but then they put that black coal into what's called a refiner's fire. Yes. And by the time that refiner's fire gets through melting it and gets through taking out all of the, uh, all, all of the dirty things, all of the it things is. that need to be, it, 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 it comes out pure gold because it's all been removed in the refiner's fire. 
And God puts us through processes. In this world, ye shall have tribulation. Yes, yes. But Jesus said, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So guess what? Because I have overcome the world, so will you. But let him do the work to purify you. Because you want that. You want to be used by God, but he's got to be able to mold and make you. And he's not going to be able to do that if he gives little Jenny every little thing that she wants. We know that from our own children. Oh, how we have spoiled these brats. If I had known then what I know now, <laughs> we should have withholding some things from them. My goodness. Well, they're going to be all right, because I know my father's going to take care of them. All right. Wow, wow. Did the best that we could, he'd take it from here. They're his children, not ours. Amen. Wow, Amen. Wow, wow. So we want to allow God to be able to speak to us in a time of prayer. We want to allow God the time to deal with Ooh, us Jesus. so that he can let us know who is it I want you to bless today? Who is it that I want you to touch today? What words do I want you to speak to those that need to hear from you? And it may not happen in the, in the time that you are quiet, and it may happen, but you will never know unless you do it, because see, God has different ways of leading and guiding and directing us. If you're just open to what God has to say all throughout the day, he can lead and guide you into blessing, into being a blessing, into the things that he has for you to do. But if you're not, if you're so focused on what I want to do and what I want to accomplish and what I have, and don't get me wrong, guys, it's good to have those. Don't, don't say, well, Pastor God said, I don't have to have any goals. I did not say that. What I am saying is yield that. Yeah. Always be open to if God wants to change it, it's okay. Yes. Wow, wow, if wow. God wants to take you a different direction, then okay. go that direction. Wow, wow, don't wow. be so focused on, no, 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 no. This is what I want to do. I'm going to do it this way. Mm. Wow, wow, Let wow. God be able to get in there and move you any way he wants to move you. And another thing, when you're on the Lord's side, he can do to you whatever he wants to do. And guess what? It's okay. Yeah. Why? Because you know him. And why do you know him? Because you know that everything that God allows in your life is working together for your good. Whatever God allows in your life, it's making it work together to make you the only he has for you to be. Yeah. Don't you know that the life that God has for you is way beyond anything that you can ever expect? told me when I was 19 or 20 years old and one day, by the way, you're going to be married, you're going to be in your big house and that church is going to be in your house. First of all, you're not going to tell me that I'm going to be a pastor. First of all, that's where you're wrong. I already been, God now already have an agreement. No pastors ever. My dad is the pastor in my life. No more. <laughs> but you see, that was my goal. I, I, there's so many times I just knew I had an agreement with God. Yeah. But what happened was it was my agreement, <laughs> not God's. I never forget, I never will forget the day I called Robert when I went to the doctor and found out that Jalen was a girl. My husband said, oh, hold up, wait a minute now. I thought God and I had an agreement that I would not be the only man in the house. <laughs> I never will forget that day. Boy, I laugh, oh, I laugh. But I was just so glad to hear him say, but I'm good. Oh, thank you, Jesus. This is it. <laughs> wow. Amen. <laughs> God in our plans, but the truth of the matter is, let God let you know. And that's the only way that you can rest assured that your prayer will be answered. Because if you remember in first in first John chapter 5, God does in this verse 14. First John chapter 5, verse 14. I'm gonna read it to you because I don't want to misquote it. I know what it says, but you know how when you're nervous, you just you know, let me just go ahead and read it. First John chapter 5, verse 14. See, this is the prayer that we need to realize is that with all the scriptures that we that we make up about how, you know, you give me whatever I want, whatever I ask, whatever I think that I need. Uh -huh. 
Yeah, 514. And this is the confidence. See, you wonder what I mean by confidence. This is when you can know that you know that you know that you know. This is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will. That's when you know that you know that you know. You can count on it. When we ask according to his will, you know that he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. So how do you know if it's his will? Because you heard him tell you. You know he has made a way for you to know that this is what he wants. I always say, boy, now, now, if, if God wants me to marry a so-and-so kind of man, he's going to have to come down here himself and tell me. But no, what God did was he said, it's not about you. Mm -mm. It's not about what you want. He didn't come down and tell He just, as Robert was talking, he was just talking to me. It's what I'm about. It's a, and this is what he told me. It's not about you. That's what I'm telling you. It's not about you. It's not about what you want. It's about what I want to do with the two of you in ministry. In other words, God says, my goal is y'all in ministry. I don't care about all this whole love stuff. I don't care about how he's looking, how he's looking. I don't care about where he came from, where you came from. I don't care about any of that. All that matters is, I'm putting the two of you in ministry together. Now deal with that. Now whatever else is in between, that's all up to y'all. But I, I know what I want to do with y'all. I'm not what he's used to having. I don't look like that's her. Ain't got nothing to do with it. Just get with him. I got his heart. I got your heart. Just get together. It's going to work. Jesus. Well, God, that wasn't the romantic part. I, I. <laughs> don't get me wrong. You have, what God put together is good. But it just wasn't what I what expected. And that's a part of the problem as well. A lot of divorces. Where am I going here, honey? I don't know. A lot of divorces. Yeah, I mean, you because it wasn't what I expected. Mm. Oh, I'm, I'm telling you like I tell my daughters, wait on, wait on God. That's the only thing I can tell you. That's the best thing you can do is wait on God. Because he knows all things. He knows the end from the beginning. Whose hands do you want to choose what you have? The one who knows all or the one who knows what he looks like? What do you, what do you have? What do you want to depend on? I prefer to depend on God. He knows it all. And, he, and the thing is, he has the plan. He has the goals. He has the dream. He has the vision. He's got it all. The truth of the matter is, if you put it in his hands or not, you're going to go through trials and tribulations. Yeah. It doesn't matter yeah. where you are or who you are or what you do. Yeah. Rich, poor, old, young. I mean, he's this young, beautiful um, girl. Had a New York apartment, so you know she had money. She beautiful. She was a Miss USA. Yes. Yeah. 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 2019. Did you see it? She's gorgeous. Yeah. She, I mean, in a New York apartment, you think she had it all. She had it all. Yeah, it all. Yeah. But you see, it doesn't matter. Trials and tribulations are going to come to any and everybody, wow. no matter what. Wow, wow. The difference is, mm -hmm. whose side are you on? Yeah. Yeah. And I know we say it all the time, I know God's on my side. Well, see, God's on your side as long as he has you in the palm of his hands. Yes. But for you to just say God's on my side and it doesn't matter what God wants, that's never going to happen. Wow, wow, wow. And you don't want it to happen because you don't know what's good for you. The Bible tells you we don't know how to pray as we ought. We have to be the ones to rely on the Holy Ghost to intercede through us according to the perfect will of the Father. He has. And I mean, it's just a, it, it blows my mind. Look, Holy Spirit, you would have prayed through me to God? Wow. That, 
this shows how very reliant and dependent we must be on him. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Lord. He gave us the perfect example. He gave us the perfect example. He gave us the perfect example. But do we really care about what God wants? Do we really care about what plans God has for us? Do we really care about what God has given us from our mother's womb, from before our mother's womb? Do we care? Are we willing to throw our dreams and our plans away? I've heard, I've heard so many pastors talk about how they had plans. I remember Elder Kelly talking about how he had planned for this and planned for that, and God just took it and just threw it away. But God had greater for him. And he yielded himself to him. And it's going to only be those who yield themselves to the will and the plan of God. They're going to know all of the beauty, all of the grandeur. Because we serve a grand God. Yes. He has great plans for us. Great. Wow, 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 wow. What is your motive? A perfect illustration of what I'm talking about is little Johnny is your child. Would you allow little Johnny to tell you what to give you, what to give him? Would you allow little Johnny to tell you when to bless him with things? Would you allow little Johnny to tell you? Wow. I'm talking about little Johnny now. Wow, wow. Now the truth of the matter is some people do. They do. Mm. Mm. Wonder how that turns out. Mm. Wow, 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 wow. But most likely, you wouldn't hand little Johnny the keys to the car. Hopefully, you wouldn't hand him the keys to the car because you know he's not ready to drive. He's not mature yet. He's not developed yet. He doesn't even know how to read yet. Jesus. God is saying, I can't let you tell me how to bless you because you are asking for the worst things ever. And you would look back at me and say, God, why did you let me do this? And it happens, by the way. Sometimes God allows people to have what they're asking for just for them to turn around and say, wow, God, uh, why did you let me have what I wanted? <laughs> he wants to give you what's best for you. Please allow him. He wants to give you what the grand hope that, um, that Jeremiah 29 plans that he has for you. Doesn't feel good, but oh, it's so rewarding. Yes, it is. You'll be able to look back and say, yes. Wow, yes. look at what God yes. has done. Wow, I'm so glad that I yes. submitted to the will of God. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Because I left. Yes. Now, check this out, Evangelist Miller. I made the vow. I was thinking about this the other day. I made the vow at my wedding. And I'll never get one prophet that, that, that was a member of my church. He just looked at me, hung his head, and shook his head when he heard me say these words that Ruth spoke. Um, I can't even think of it right now. But anyway, it, it, she ended it with, if I leave, if all but death part thee and me. And I'm like, I'm out of here. <laughs> I am gone. I just, I don't deserve this, and I can't take it. And I left. But I'm so glad, oh, so glad, mm -hmm. that the Holy Ghost came to me and said, yeah, you can leave, that's your prerogative, but you'll be out of my will. And I knew then, oh, no, 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 no. Wow. I can't live this long to get out of his will, because I killed myself. I know I will. No, I get to be in God's will, so I came back. And he told me, if you come back, and he called it what I called it, if you come back to the hellhole, I promise you I'll show you my glory. Yeah. I'm so glad. Wow, wow, wow. I'm so glad, because he's simply that's what I had my plans, and he's wonderful, good man of God. into the refiner's fire, you see? We just had to be put through the process, you yeah. see? And now we're ministering to other couples that went through what we have gone through, and that's what it was all about. Yeah. That's why we had to go through the hill. I'm so glad I had to go through the hill. Yes, you see, T, what you talked about earlier? If I hadn't gone through that, I couldn't have helped you, baby. It was the anointing that, we, that brought me over. It wasn't me. 
through the anointing on my life, yeah. that God had to put me through that in order that you may be delivered. Yeah. And guess what, T? Your turn. So stop trying to manipulate God's hand, please. Get on the Lord's side, like what Moses said. Stop making the molten calves and worshiping something that you know didn't bring you all the way through what you've been through. Stop worshiping the money. Stop worshiping the wishes. Uh -huh. Stop worshiping the cars and yes. all the fame and the fortune and the men. Let those men go and let God do what he has to do and let him do her. And the women, by the way, I'm a, I'm a woman so talking about men, but let the women go and let God do what he has to do. Get on his side yes. and let him give you his very best yes. that he has to you. I'm going by his looks. Oh, oh, mommy, he's just so fine, and he's and he's in, and, and and his major is in, in chemistry, and oh, he's gonna be yeah, we're gonna be making money together. Wow. You better wait. wait wow. Oh, wow. God. Wow. Jesus. Going by these looks. Thank God, my husband didn't go by looks. He wouldn't have me. I'm just, I already know that. It's God, Jesus. and together. We make the great team yes. that God has put together. And together we're going to fulfill the purpose of God. All because we both waited. He could have chosen someone. He asked God. He asked God three times to marry another girl. Beautiful girl. And God said no. Thank you, Jesus. But what if he had said, Thank you know what, Jesus. God, never mind. <laughs> Thank you. What if he had said, but that's okay, God. No, no, no. I want beauty. I want it. I want it. He'd have been with her and then no telling what would have happened. Thank God he waited. Thank you, waited. Lord. Hallelujah. I thank God Hallelujah. that this, Hallelujah. Uh, Hallelujah. this good looking man of God Hallelujah. is faithful to me. Hallelujah. My God, thank you, Jesus. Because we waited. Jesus. Is everything perfect? Oh my God, no. Do we still have struggles? Oh my God, yes. But are we fulfilling the purpose of God, yes. which is the only thing that matters? Yes. If we come to him every day to listen and hear and obey what God has to say, then we can rest in knowing rest. that his will is being done. And guess what? There's no more struggle. The only struggle is that we have to die to ourselves. We have to die to our flesh. We have to die to what we want. I love what Minister Dale said this morning. She said God took her off her high horse and God took out the pride. He stripped her of the pride so that she can now be yielded to what God had for her in Amen. her man of God. Amen. Wow. I love that. He took me off my high horse, and he's continuing to strip me of my pride. It's still a process. It's still a process. I'm still doing it. But I want that because I know that God has what's best for me. So allow yourself to be stripped. Allow yourself to be killed. Allow the flesh to be cut off that the purpose and the will of God may be established, and then you will be on the right side. What side are you on? Let's come to the Lord's side. Be blessed. Amen.